Today we are going to build inside a very interesting case. Oh, it's it's not really a case, it's more of a concept. This is Mod Cases 3D. Now, Mod Case is a very interesting company. They do have a couple of cases that they seemingly are selling. However, they are not really selling the 3D that we have in front of us here. No, this is a concept that you are buying into. So if you're buying the case, you are paying the 25 something, but you will just get the 3D print files. Now, I do have a 3D printer, but I'm like too stupid to use it. Mm -hmm. So uh, they were uh, nice enough to uh, just print it for me and send it to us. And I really wanted to try it out because this is like an upgrade path thing where you are printing the case as it is at the moment that you are buying it and then later on when they release updates and updates they will send them to you because that's what you are buying into and then you can upgrade your case down the line with whatever new things that they have developed in the meantime. Now the model that I have here as far as I'm aware should be the 14.6 I think 14.6 liter model and it is actually quite outdated like the front nowadays looks completely different the side panels now they have like less dense mesh capable of letting more air through and they now have side panels where you can mount fans to even 120 millimeter fans and the model that I have right here doesn't have that but still I even if the case is kind of outdated by by today's standard because you have all of those upgrades I still wanted to what I really need to build it it and just see how it performs, how a 3D printed case performs because it looks hella interesting. Like if you look closely you can see all of those 3D print lines that you know every 3D printer creates. You, you, you can really see that this is a do-it-yourself thing and I really really like that. Before preparing for the video I spent let's say 30 minutes figuring out how to open the case. Like just you have nothing to grab to and the only way to open it up really is push your nails in between the side panel and the top panel. And if you try to open it from the center, it is, yeah, that doesn't, it doesn't feel good. You, you can open it on, on the side, that is, it is way easier. Before we continue with what we are putting in here, uh, first up, a big thank you to, to ModCase for sending it over and also for printing it for us. Uh, I tried with the 3D printer that I have, but I, I was just unable to do it. I'm just... I don't know how to do it. Now, a small disclaimer before we continue. I have never worked inside this case before. Uh, this is intended. Uh, because it is such a concept thing and you are printing your own case and then you're assembling the case and you're, and you're building inside the case and even if I cannot print and assemble it because as I said my 3D printer doesn't work I still wanted to at least experience like the first time building in it without having any information at all. As I'm looking inside of it it does look like a pretty standard uh, mini ITX case because yes it is mini ITX uh, given the size. We had a bunch of cases built like this most of which had like a middle section uh, for example the the Nuvolo Stack 2 looks pretty similar we have the main board going on one side and then kind of oriented the other way around looking back then we have the GPU on, on this side and it's, it's yeah, pretty much the same thing. So okay, the case is ready, we can actually start building, but what will we pull inside? So back then, when uh, I talked to, uh, to ModCase, uh, they asked what I wanted to, to put inside. This beautiful Gainward RTX 4080 Phantom, which, which is freaking enormous. It is basically the whole case, but they reassured me this will go in, so we will put the sucker in there. It's, it's, this thing is going to be 90% GPU. Now, given the do-it-yourself factor of this case, of course, I wanted to push it to the walls to some degree without over-exaggerating, because the model that I have here has very limited CPU cooler support. So what we are going with this time is our Ryzen 7 600X because honestly in, in today's world you still don't need more. This is plenty and this is also plenty so uh, this is going to be an amazing gaming PC. For the motherboard we are going with the 
ASRock B650E PGITX because it's the only mini ITX Ryzen 7000 motherboard that I own. The only thing that I would probably do is remove like the, the SSD cooler because it is just annoyingly loud. You know what? Let's immediately remove it before I forget removing it because I swear to God I can't stand it. I get the idea, but the implementation is just horrible. It is obnoxiously loud. And given that we are talking about mini ITX builds, uh, it's very much possible that you are going to have the case right next to your face. And believe me, you do not want that fan running. I don't know if you can see it. It's not all the way down, but to keep an SSD in, it's, it's going to be sufficient. For the usual SSD, it's nothing special. We are going to slap in the 970 EVO Pro that I always have lying around with, with a couple of benchmark tools. And for the RAM, we are going again with the G-Skill Trident Z5 Neo. Nothing, nothing special about that. But for the cooling, it's going to be special because I don't know if I can pull this off. I remembered that back then when we did the review, the Alpenfern Black Ridge was an amazing cooler if paired with a better fan. So although I am still not sure if we can pull this off, I will try to install this little thing here with six heat pipes given it's a really freaking small cooler and in case that i have the space i will put a arctic p12 underneath or on top depending on how much i can i can play inside of here and if i still have some space left on top i can still go with the nokia nf a12 x25 i don't know if any of this will work i just hope it will now other than the few things i just mentioned that are like build related uh, Modcase also sent over a bag of goodies and it's a few quite interesting goodies actually. Like for example, this uh, GPU holder here, uh, GPU retainer it's actually called, and they have in this bag the black version of it, which I can guarantee you I will use. They also included a SFX PSU holder instead of the yellow one that they built into this thing by default so you can bet your ass that i will replace them other than that we have a bunch of spacers we have i'm really not sure there is glue on them so i could glue this to something but it looks like a strap like i could strap this to the top i, I don't know we have a bunch of replacement parts for example these here i have them double uh, we have the thumb screws for the PCIe riser, to which we'll get in a minute because that's an amazing concept. Then we have what looks like feet. We have basically a bunch of little extras, which nice to have, not necessary because everything is already in here except for these black pieces. But it's 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 nice to have. Okay, first time experience building inside a 3D printed case. I have no idea what awaits me, but it's going to be interesting. But before we can actually get to the case, we need to quickly assemble basically half of the PC. Cooler, CPU, the RAM, everything needs to be in before we even touch the case. And as I'm building in here, I'm actually realizing that this is the very first like actual build video that we are doing on or in this new room here, which is quite exciting to be honest. And yes, I do know that this is a Gigabyte Aorus uh, like cover for a Ryzen CPU. I just, for the Ryzen CPU socket, I just have no clue where the other one is. Probably on the IROS motherboard. I'm, I'm sorry. I know I'm a monster. This screw is not really meant to be used without the cooler. I know that, but to be honest, a M.2 SSD does not need to be like hard screwed in. It, it, if it moves a bit, it's not that much of a deal as long as you are not moving it while it is running. But please do not repeat that. <laughs> Before we put in the cooler, let's see what happens with the RAM, if I am even able to install these RAM sticks here with this cooler. Oh no. No. 
No. This mounting method goes straight through the motherboard. Oh no, an AM5 doesn't allow that. Oh no. Closest alternative that I do have is my a bit dusty old Nokia NHL 12. Yes, L L12S. Now, this is also the same type of, of cooler that the, the Black Ridge was, but it has significantly less uh, heat pipes, which already isn't making me quite happy. But uh, yeah, we will see if this works. And here we can do essentially the same thing where we can see if I can mount a fan on top of the cooler as well as underneath it. Uh, which would be great, which would just mean that I can push a bit more heat out, which would be, I think, what we need to do in order to make this work. Oh, for God's sake, it doesn't. And it's not even just the RAM, it's also this part here. <sighs> Okay, now once the whole thing is, is inside of the case, or once it go, is about to go inside of the case, we will have to see if I am able to slap a 15mm fan on there, or maybe even a 25mm. But what we can quickly do is just eyeball it to make sure that there is even a fan going on there at all. Yeah, you can, but it's going to be a 15mm fan. This being an ITX case, it is just not the regular 30 minutes build where you are very quickly done and then you go on with your life by playing video games for 12 hours straight. It is still an ITX build, an ITX case, so you are going to have to think a lot beforehand. Thankfully for once, I did plan a lot ahead, except for the cooler. Okay, the yellow one is out, let's use the black bracket. Oh, and yeah, across the whole website, uh, mod case is saying, do not over tighten the screws. So I am not over tightening the screws. Looks good so far, and it only took a lot longer than it should have. Now, on the website, um, mod case is already giving you a few examples, and some of which are really not that expensive. So they did a pretty good job there. However, I already had one, and you need one of those uh, angled at the right way, uh, which is great, because I had it, so I do not need to buy a new one, and you will want to put it in first, otherwise you will just get into way too much hassle down the line. Now should I already install a few things beforehand, yeah maybe the CPU power connector? That way I don't have to do it later on, that might be a good idea. And during me pressing all of this in, it would be the best if I already connect the little USB 3.0 header for the front panel and the front connectors, otherwise I can guarantee you that there is no way that I'm ever going to be able to put it back in. Oh yeah, the beauty of mini ITX cases. A lot of swearing, a lot of crying, and sometimes it even looks good afterwards. But just sometimes. And it's not even that much of a cable mess. Now the next order of the day is going to be the PCIe riser on the other side. And that one is hella interesting. Now, if there is one aspect of the case that I believe to be the coolest, then it is how uh, Modcase designed this movable, reusable, re-whatever PCIe riser holder because it's entirely made uh, from a 3D printer or as, except for one little nut that is inside but it is hella freaking cool. Let me just move the camera for that. Okay so for the whole PCIe riser section we have this part right here and those here are essentially the just 3D printed thumb screws which is already hella cool and they are attached to these yeah nuts holders, clamps, whatever you want to call them, but there are two of these 
and you can take them out by just removing this here. And how this works is essentially you take one of them, you make sure that the little metal paw that you can see on, on one side, you can see it right here, is on the back side of the riser. And then you are essentially just slapping it on there or in between like this and aligning the hole in this, let's say, clamp with the hole of the PCIe riser. And you will be doing that on both sides. And once you are done with everything, you will align it behind the whole thing and then you will use the two thumb screws to go through both of these holes, basically the clamp and then followed by the riser cable. And on the other side of the riser cable, it will start to um, thread into that little metal plate that we saw before. From here, you can do two things. You can unmount these two a tiny bit and then because it is not like a, a screw hole, it is a rail. You can move the whole thing a bit left or right. Or what you can also do is untighten the screws in the bottom and move the whole thing a bit left or right, giving you a lot of freedom in case that not everything was 3D printed like perfectly, perfectly. So this gives you quite a lot of playroom in worst case scenarios, which I believe is an amazing thing. So overall you got quite a lot of headroom just by how a uh, mod case designed that PCIe riser. And I think that's really, really cool given I am somebody who is unable to probably use a uh, 3D printer. So uh, I think that's kind of the, the part made extra for me. Okay, and now comes the moment of truth. Can I really fit in here a whole 4080? Oh my god. We, we are, we are done. Yeah, I think so. It works. Overall, working inside of the mod case 3D was significantly easier than I expected. Given we have some experience with mini ITX cases of this form factor, I believe this was a lot easier than, for example, inside the Nuvolo, uh, what was it, uh, Stack 2.0. Now, that being said, do not do what I was doing here. This is a huge disclaimer. What I was doing here was hella stupid. I still did it because I wanted to fit in the GPU and I just went along with it. But do not do this. The way that I crammed in the GPU, thus pressing the octopus connector against the top panel, that's hella stupid. Do not do this. This is not a disclaimer as sort of, if you do it, you may break the cable and oh no, you need to buy a 1299 cable. No, no, this is a fire hazard. Do not do this. And you don't need to do this. You can also use a GPU like this inside of this case without creating 
or without risking your entire family. There are more than enough 90 degrees adapters now for the Octopus Connector. You have from Cable Mod, you have whatever RGB thing they just released. You have from various companies, various sorts of additions and variations that cost from cheap to expensive. Nobody needs to do what I did here. Do not repeat this. I will leave a couple of links in the description below to get an adapter, a 90 degree adapter, to not do what I did. But ignoring for a second the stupidity that I showcased today, this looks hella gorgeous. Now we ran a couple of benchmarks in here just for temperature, no gaming related benchmarks. It's a 4080, it's a 7600X. Look it up, there are more than enough people who benchmark this combination all over the place. Running Firmark, we tested the CPU and GPU separately. Doing this, the all-core boost clock dropped a bit. It dropped down to 5.04 gigahertz, which is a gigahertz beneath the usual all-core thing, which is not good, don't get me wrong, but I've seen worse. And given the small cooler that we used, it was I was surprised how well it went, to be honest. We did that, uh, that temperature recording without a panel. Then we slapped the panel back on, absolutely no decrease in clock speed. It stayed at the same 95.4 degrees C, it stayed at the same 5.06 gigahertz all core, and that's exactly what I wanted to see. So this, the side panels, even if they are already outdated by half a year, they do work perfectly fine. They work a lot better than what I expected. So I'm, I'm very, very pleased with that. For the GPU, the same thing there, because we tested everything separately. We ran the GPU using Furmark. This time we had to settle for 1080p because I don't have a monitor attached to the table as of now. Uh, but we ran it in 1080p and the GPU was sitting at a snuggling 48.7 degrees C. Yeah, it was basically sleeping. But all the fans were always running at 100% speed. Uh, I just set them to 100 to have like the max performance. Then I slapped the panel back on and lo and behold, it rose. It rose to a staggering 49.2 degrees C. So plus minus margin of error, the panels did not change a thing. But and I mean nothing. It, it worked flawlessly. To have some sort of a real number, not a full blast, like temperature recording, which is nobody needs that, let's be honest. So we also tried a more regular setup, still at 1080p, but to get some readings that an actual human being would, uh, would maybe see. So we ran Metro Exodus on 1080p and we reset all of the fan curves back to auto, whatever the the ASRock motherboard does by default, and whatever the Gain World uh, 4080 Phantom does by default. And in this configuration, running Metro Exodus 1080p on Extreme, the CPU never went above 91 degrees C, while the GPU never went above 61.3. So these are very acceptable numbers, and I am freaking happy with them. For a 3D printed case, whose production cost can be boiled down to like 25 bucks. This is an amazing freaking thing. So yeah, this was my first experience building inside of a 3D printed case. It was hella interesting. Now, of course, it was not the full experience as in I am printing it myself and then I am building it myself and I'm doing everything myself. It's not quite there, but given that they send us the case, the building process itself was Pleasant, honestly, it was pleasant. I'm I'm happy with it. It was more pleasant than inside the stack 2.0, so I'm quite happy. Of course, color-wise, I mean you see the the 3D printed like lines, it's not necessarily the most clean thing out there, but that's just the nature of a 3D printed case. And given that you are not buying a case, you are buying a project and, and buying yourself into it, it's I love projects like this. And if you're interested in these kinds of things, uh, Modcase also has another thing going on where they, they offer 3D printed little mini ITX NAS cases, like stackable things. And you even have a free version where you can have like the NAS portion and then one bay with four or five hard drives and if you buy into the whole project you can stack the crap out of them and you have different options, different fan sizes, you have all, all sorts of different things. So I, I believe they should stick to that concept and develop further 
down the line more features, more whatever, and create more sophisticated things, because this is, I think, a, a very interesting path to go down. But yeah, this was my experience. I hope you enjoyed it with me, but performance-wise, I'm impressed, I really am. And quality-wise, it's a lot better than I, than I thought in the beginning. Uh, once everything is assembled, it keeps together relatively well. The only thing I'm not such a fan of is, is this back cover. That's, I don't know, I don't really like it. But for the rest, amazing freaking case. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you want to continue watching, have a look at another one of our builds, or at the case review of this 3D case, because the name is actually just 3D. It's, it's a hella interesting case. Maybe have a look at the review. Anyway, thank you for watching, and hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.